What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for August 15th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. And, well, do we have a big show for you today. It is Tuesday. Before we get into our motivation, though, we're going to talk a little James Harden. And it things got juicy since uh, I last talked to you yesterday. James was in China doing some promotional event and said twice that Daryl Morey is a liar and he will never be or play for an organization that he is a part of. Wow. So there's so much to unpack there. Not sure uh, there's enough time on this episode to get into that. But, I mean, what is he lying about? Um, And and again, there's something, there's a piece to the story that we're probably never going to get but did he lie when he took the, the pay cut? Did he lie when he told him he was going to try to, to re-sign him to a larger deal? Did he lie when he said he was going to try to work out a trade partner? Because that's the thing. If he lied when he said he was going to trade him and w- the reports of what the Clippers were sending back <clears throat> are true, well, Daryl's got to worry about the Sixers, too, there, James. And he probably tried, and he's got to do what he's got to do. If he lied to you about the Max extension, that's a different story. And I agree that uh, that's on Daryl Morey. Uh, but before we get more into Harden, let's talk about our Tuesday positivity slash motivation. And today, I've heard this. And it's part of the series, actually, that we've been doing on just putting out the effort and and being willing to put yourself out there and not fail. And this one is, without commitment, you'll never start. More importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. And sometimes it takes just getting started to, to really do it. I sat on this podcast for almost a year. Uh, before I finally said, you know what, it's time to do it. I was trying to make sure this, that, and the other were, were worked out. Uh, but then consistency is how you finish. And this we are almost a year in now on this day in Philly sports history. We're over a year on Back to the Future. So for that, I thank you. But just be consistent. There's going to be good days. There's bad days. And that's with anything. Not just sports. Not just podcasting, what hobbies, whatever. Just with life, you're going to have good days and bad days, but you need to be consistent and remain committed. Now, how does that tie in with James Harden? Well, let's take Daryl Morey out of this for a second because he may well have lied to James Harden. And as the president of a professional sports team, you can't do that. Like that's We'll save that for another time. But this is mostly about James Harden. Um. Okay, in Oklahoma City, uh, he left due to to money, and see, like I feel like it was like a short or small amount of money, and they didn't give him enough time to consider coming back. Blah 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 blah. Okay, you chalk that one up. Then in Houston, he forced a trade. He wore a fat suit. Nets, he was only there for a season and a half. Forced his way out of there. Now with the Sixers, same things happening again. And Jim Schwartz used to say this about Nigel Bradham all the time. Or maybe not all the time, but he said it once, and it's really stuck with me. You do dumbass things, people are going to start thinking you're a dumbass. And if there's a problem every single place you go, James, maybe you're the problem. And I'm not sticking up for Daryl Morey because I, I don't doubt that he screwed this up too. But this is now the fourth place that you've kind of forced your way out of. Maybe it's time for you to take an introspective look inside and see what you're not doing. Because, sure, you're committed to making money and and being a good basketball player, but you're not consistent. That's why you're not finishing with anything. Things get a little tough, and and you're not finishing it out. So that's where this ties in with this whole James Harden thing. Um, I'm not saying he's a dumbass, but I'm saying now this is the fourth team he's been on that there have been issues that he's forced his way out of. Do you think it's Oklahoma City? Do you think it's Houston? Do you think it's the Nets? Do you think it's the Sixers even? Or do you think it's you, James? This is four places now. I think it's time to take a look in. Now, Daryl Morey, don't think you're getting off scot-free here because there's no doubt in my mind you lied to him in some way. 
There's no way he's going to go out there and say, like, yeah, he does dumbass things. Yeah, he, he forces his way out. But you, you don't call a man a liar twice when I don't even know if that was provoked or planned. What, I don't know the backstory of it. But you got called a liar twice. You did something. You did something. So you're not off scot-free. But as far as James Harden, this is now the fourth team that you force your way out of. I, 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 once, okay, twice. This isn't Lionel Richie and the Commodores. Three times a lady? No, this is four. Four. Count them up. Four times you force your way out now. I think you're the problem, buddy. I think you're the problem. But... If you take anything away from it, without commitment, you'll never start. More importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. That is our Tuesday positively, positivity slash words of wisdom. Whew, man, things are getting juicy in Sixers land. All right, it is Messy Mania Day. And before we get into Union, yes, they're playing Inter-Miami tonight uh, for a spot in the League Cup. And it's going to be a great team. I'm definitely going to watch this game. But Channel 10, I have been using Messi Mania since this whole thing started. Messi Mania in Chester. What did I see last night on the news for Channel 10? Messi Mania. Whoever's out there listening, be sure to like and subscribe for me. Tell your friends. Give me a shout out. I'm more than willing to do a quick 30 second spot every day. I'll do it with next to John Clark on the 11 o'clock news. Hey, and if it's channel 10, channel 6, channel 3, 29, I don't care. Like, I'll, I'll do all three. But come on, man. Give me credit for Messi Mania. You're killing me here. But they are in action tonight. So it should be a decent game, um, a, a fun game. Um, hopefully the Union com can come out on top. I've been talking to you about Philly Goat. They have the, the awesome jersey tees for the Union. They have the amazing selection of uh, the Kelly Green fly and birds and eagles. and I mean, the selection is just phenomenal. So go check them out. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery. Do some back-to-school shopping. Get yourselves ready for the season. The clock is ticking. There is still time to get your eagle stuff for the, home, the opening game. Uh, but make sure you use that promo code Jim Montgomery when you check out. 10% off. It helps you out. It helps me out. It helps Philly Goat out. Everyone's happy, except for James Harden. Uh, they do have some James Harden stuff. If you're if you're pro Harden, there are some uh, Harden stuff on the site as well. If if that uh, is your cup of tea, uh, but again, you do dumbass things. You, you you might be maybe you're a dumbass, uh, but don't be a dumbass. Go to phillygoat.com. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery for ten percent off of your order. They are not going to force their way out the way James Harden did four times. All right. Phillies are in action tonight up in Toronto. Uh, the Eagles uh, had a good joint practice. Uh, Elliott Shores Park always charts the plays and kind of gives a, a winner. I've said that the Browns kind of outplayed them, so hopefully that is something that they'll use as a motivation today for their joint practice, weather permitting, and then uh, getting ready for Thursday's preseason game. Uh, but all the players, everybody seems to be pumped up about it because it's it's different now. You're actually um, hitting somebody else that's not your teammate. Uh, so they'll they'll be back at it this evening for another joint practice. Um, but it is it's Messamania Channel Ten. Please give me credit. All right, today we're gonna go back to 1990, and on this day in 1990, the Phillies beat the Giants six to nothing. Darren Dalton had went one for three with a homer and two RBI. John Kruk went two for four with a double and an RBI, but the big story was Terry Mulholland pitched a no-hitter against his former team. He faced 27 batters, no walks, 8 Ks. The only blemish was an error by Charlie Hayes in the seventh, who Charlie Hayes then ironically caught a rope down the line from Gary Carter to end the game, saving the no-hitter, so he redeemed himself. But Terry Mulholland even went one for three at the plate. Now, this no-hitter was the first ever at the vet. Opened in 1971, um, and it took until 1990 to have the first no-hitter. There was actually only two 
The second one came in 2003 from Kevin Millward, the final season at the Vet. It was the seventh all-time for the Phillies. Uh, we know now they're up to 14. And that was I, the eighth, the eighth of the 1990 season. So you could tell it was definitely a pitcher's league back then. But on this day, it was Terry Mohallen no-hitting the Giants for a 6-0 win. Also going one for three at the plate. One Charlie Hare, Hayes error from being a perfect game. Want more Phillies coverage? Check out our friends at 2008 Phils. The link is in the description. <clears throat> For a limited time, they're offering a 75% off your subscription. They are the world's biggest Phillies emails newsletter. The, the content on there is second to none. Uh, a, a subscription gets you full access to the archives, everything they have there. You get the 2008 uh, World Series banner t-shirt. 2008 will, Phils will follow your Twitter account. I suggest you follow him. It's a good follow. You get access to giveaways, autographs, tickets, all kinds of fun stuff. And it's $2 a month, $20 for the year. You can't go wrong. Click the link in the description and check out our friends at 2008 Phils. 31 questions in 31 days about the 2023 Eagles. And today, there are three big questions in my opinion. We've covered two of them. Sean Desai, the special teams. And today, it's the linebackers. And obviously, TJ Edwards, Kazir White, gone. Two very good players for last year's team. Um, you have Hassan Reddick, who's a stud. But everybody else is just a huge question mark about what they can do. And Hassan Reddick, one, is already banged up. And two, not necessarily 100% happy about his contract. So you have that sort of floating out there as well. Uh, Nick Morrow and Nicobe Dean are likely going to be the starters alongside Hassan Reddick. They did bring in Miles Jack and Zach Cunningham for depth, which I like. Low risk, high reward. Uh, Nolan Smith and Patrick Johnson are also in the mix. And I, I think it obviously it comes down to how well Desai can get them in the right position and make sure his, his substitutions and packages are done. Um, over the years, linebacker has never really been a high priority for the Eagles. They've been, for the most part, I I feel kind of lucky. And maybe it's not lucky because they do a consistency. But with the exception of, like, I'm picturing the 2002 NFC Championship game and an old man, LeVon Kirkland. But they've been pretty good with the guys they've plugged in. Um, and and they're, they 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 have usually a good mix of young guys and then veteran guys on prove-it deals, which is what they have this year. Uh, I think a lot's going to come down to N'Kobe Dean. Uh, everybody seems mixed on him. Everybody thinks he's either the second coming or he's just another guy that uh, isn't going to really make much of a difference. He's like a step slow. Uh, it is an area, to be honest, I'm nervous about the linebackers. I think I, I think somewhere in the middle, everybody's like, oh, they're going to be great, and everybody's like, they're going to be terrible. I don't necessarily think they're going to be either. I just hope they don't become a liability for the team. Um, I mean, obviously, if all goes well, it could be one of the strengths of the team. If all goes bad, it's going to be one of those areas where we're like, for the love of God, why didn't they address the linebacking core? Or why did they address the linebacking core the way they did? Uh, but I think they're going to be somewhere in the middle. I think the front, the the defensive line is going to be able to provide some pressure to make sure that they're able to sort of mask maybe some of the weaknesses. I think the secondary is going to be good enough that it's going to also help mask. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I think the this defense could be better than last year but have worse numbers based on a lot of the different factors. If you want more, go back and listen to yesterday. Uh, but linebacker, definitely one of the top three questions. Probably the thing I'm the most nervous about other than Jalen Hurts' health on this team. So there you have our 31 questions in 31 days, our spotlight on the linebackers. On this day back in 1990, the Phillies beat the Giants 6-0 behind Terry Mulholland's no-hitter, the first ever at the Vet. Phils are in action tonight up in Toronto. Eagles have another joint practice with the Browns. 
Things are getting juicy in Sixers land. I'm sure there's going to be something. I haven't even got a chance to check the news. There may have been something that came out overnight from China. I don't know. More on that tomorrow. Remember, without commitment, you'll never start. More importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. James Harden, are you listening to me, buddy? Are you listening? All right. Whew, it's Messy Mania Day. Let's go Union, Channel 10. <clears throat> you know how to get in touch with me. I'm, I'm more than willing to do a guest hit every day. <coughs> Excuse me. Channel 6, 3, all, it goes for everybody. But at least just give me credit. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Tuesday. And until next time, I will see you when I see you.